So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to design an ML or AI-based recommendation system for a large-scale social media platform. So essentially what a recommendation engine is supposed to do is take in actions that users have already performed and then train a machine learning model, and that model will output recommendations that our user is going to like. Then as our user uses the platform, they'll interact with those recommendations, and that'll feed back into these previous user actions, and the cycle will repeat itself, generating better and better recommendations for the user as time goes on. So it's pretty easy for me to just write machine learning here, but to really think about how to design this system, we need to think about what this machine learning model is actually going to do. So the first step in figuring that out is going to be to decide what data we have and what data we want to get out of this machine learning model. So for a social media platform, one piece of data that we have is what posts a user liked and disliked. Another piece of information we have is metadata about recent posts. And then what we want to get out of this is posts that a user is going to like. So now let's take a look at how we can use a machine learning model to get from here to here. So what we'll see is that our likes and dislikes will become our training data. So our machine learning model is going to be trained on what users have liked and disliked in the past, and that information will be used by the model when it's generating our outputs. As an input to the model, every time we want to make a recommendation, we're going to want to include recent posts, and our machine learning model will then be responsible for transforming that list of recent posts into the probability that each user will like that post. So for example, this could be a number between 0 and 1, representing the probability that a user will like a specific post. Then all we have to do is sort that list and we can generate the top posts that a user is most likely to click like on. So just to recap, our likes and dislikes are our training data, our recent posts are the inputs to our model, and the probability that a user will like the post is going to be the output of our model. So now that we understand what our model is actually supposed to do, let's dive into actually how to deploy this model, train it, and run it on our recent data. So let's tackle the training part first. If you want to learn more about designing systems end to end, including how our users will interact with them, how data will be stored, and how it will be propagated throughout our system, I'd highly recommend you check out interviewpen.com for our full course on system design. So if we want to train our model, we have to have some server that can go out and do that. And remember, our training data is going to be historical likes and dislikes, so we probably have that data stored in a database somewhere, and our training server can be responsible for going out to that database and fetching that data that it can use to train on. Once it has this data, we can run our machine learning algorithm, and that'll output just a file that represents a trained model, and then we can load up that file later and use it to generate recommendations. Now our data on likes and dislikes is going to be changing over time, so we're going to have to retrain the model periodically. This can be as simple as a cron job that runs on the training server, so that every hour or day or whatever interval we see fit, we can simply retrain the model and output a new model file. So for a basic system, this is a perfectly good workflow for training a model. However, we do need some place to put this trained model file, and we want some visibility into how that model file is performing over time as the data updates. There's a lot of tools out there that exist to do just that, such as MLflow. MLflow will store our model files, and it'll allow us to store a bunch of metadata and track experiments over time, and that'll help us improve the accuracy of our model and make sure that our data is actually helping us over time. So as our training server generates our trained model file, we can have it push this model file out to our MLflow tracking server, and we can then use it from there. Now, if this is a very small scale system, this process of retraining the model every time should work. However, if this is a larger scale system, we'll likely incur a lot of overhead in downloading all of our data on all likes and dislikes within our system and retraining the model on it every single time. Thankfully, most machine learning algorithms have the ability to incrementally train a model. So we can have an initial model that's trained on historical data, and then we can import new data and simply update the model to include that new data in its training set. If we're implementing this, our workflow doesn't really change that much, other than that we're going to have to download our old model file from the tracking server first, and then we're going to have to download only the new data from our database and incrementally train our model on that and push the result back to our tracking server. Now, if we're dealing with just a simple database, downloading only the new data could actually be a bit troublesome. We'd have to have some way to represent in that database whether our model has been trained on that data or not, and we have to make sure that this process isn't error-prone and that it can handle multiple concurrent processes, writing and reading from that field. This can certainly be accomplished with ACID transactions, but a database might not be the right tool for the job in this case. To make our lives a bit easier and just to decouple our recommendations engine from our database, we can introduce a queue for this. So wherever we're getting our data from for likes and dislikes, that data will be pushed to the database, of course, but it'll also be pushed into a queue that we can use for training. Our training server will still run on a cron job, and every time it runs, it'll pull a batch of data from the queue 
and use that data to incrementally train our model. Once we read the data from the queue, it's then removed from the queue. So this reduces a lot of the overhead of having to keep track of what we've read and what we haven't read. Now there's one more optimization that we can make to this in terms of observability, and that's introducing a workflow orchestration system to give us some insight into when our process is running, what failed, what succeeded, and how long everything is taking. We can use a platform such as Airflow, which will allow us to create workflows that define what exactly is done on our training server, and then Airflow will handle the process of actually sending that as a task out to our training server and monitoring the results. Using Airflow as opposed to a simple cron job will both increase scalability in terms of adding multiple machines later on, and it'll give us a lot of observability into when things fail. So the next step here is going to be inference, but before we dive into that, let's do a quick recap of what we've gone over so far. So Airflow will be responsible for scheduling our training jobs, and whenever those training jobs are going to be run, they'll be dispatched to our training server, and our training server will be responsible for getting a batch of data from a queue, and that batch of data will include any new likes and dislikes that our model hasn't yet been trained on. Our training server will then get the the old model from MLflow, incrementally train it on the new data, and then push that model back to the tracking server. So everything is done so far, except for actually using that model to generate our recommendations. So let's dive into how that would work. The simplest option here is simply to have an inference API that will go out to MLflow, load up our model, and then use data in the database for our recent posts to actually provide recommendations to our users in real time. There's actually plenty of ML model serving services that exist that are designed specifically for hosting servers for generating recommendations recommendations off of an already trained ML model. The problem with this approach, however, is that our inference API has to actually run our machine learning model every single time we want to provide recommendations to our users. This could introduce a lot of latency for our users, so we might want some way to actually generate these recommendations beforehand and have them ready for the user as soon as they need them. So to do this, we're going to introduce an inference server, and just like with our training, we can have this read from a queue, and when any new posts are added, we can run inference on those posts to decide which users to serve them to. So our inference server will be constantly pulling from this queue. It'll use our model that's served on our tracking server, and then it'll generate our recommendations and push them into some sort of in-memory cache that we can then use to serve our results to our user. When our user is actually accessing our system, they'll have to go through some sort of API, and that API will be responsible for reading the data from the cache and getting their recommendations. Because this is just a cache, any older recommendations that aren't really relevant to the user anymore will automatically get removed as we start to run out of storage space. So at this point, we've fully designed the inference and training for our machine learning recommendation system. Let's take a look at some next steps. One really important consideration to make is going to be load balancing and distributed training. So if we look back at our diagram, we can see a lot of places where we have single points of failure and choke points where our system could be too slow. Our training server, for example, we could easily distribute onto multiple machines by using frameworks for machine learning that can handle distributing that training job onto multiple servers. Our inference server could also be scaled because we can simply have multiple machines that are reading from the queue, and then each machine would run inference on whatever data it gets from the queue. Our API could also be scaled by introducing multiple copies of the API and then a load balancer in front to manage the load. Another important thing to think about would be pre-processing the data, and we'd likely want some sort of distributed data analytics framework that could handle processing all of our data that we're getting before it's actually sent to our machine learning model. And finally, we could certainly experiment with different data sources and also using that data in creative ways, and that'll allow us to create more tailored results for our users. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more content like this on interviewpen.com. We have tons of more in-depth system design and data structures and algorithms content for any skill level, along with a full coding environment and an AI teaching assistant. You can also join our Discord, where we're always available to answer any questions you might have. If you or a friend wants to master the fundamentals of software engineering, check us out at interviewpen.com.